All right. So today we are going to spend talking about time to spend talk, talking about pipelining two. So this is the second lecture on pipelining. In the previous one, we talked about uh, what is the benefit of uh, using a pipelining pipelining mode versus a non pipeline structure. Uh, and the benefit that we saw earlier was that uh, plenty of hardware resources were uh, going unused and they were not being utilized all the time, or at least almost all the time. Uh, so we tried to uh, do things in parallel, right? So that was pipelining and we looked at how to calculate speed up um, and so on. So today we will be focusing on one of the hazards. So there were three of them, right? So there was a data hazard, there was a control hazard and there was a structural hazard. So what we'll be doing today is looking at two techniques in register forwarding and stalling in order to avoid one specific type of hazard, which is the data hazard. That's what we are going to be looking at today. Now today's lecture uh, is a little bit more complex. Uh, so I want you guys to be uh, engaged, ask questions, uh, and pay uh, more than usual amount of uh, attention to this content. So if you look at the previous five step, the, the, the previous lecture, we have detailed the five steps in hardware, right? So there was a IF stage, the instruction fetch, where every instruction goes through this stage to get that instruction register filled out from the instruction memory. The next stage was the instruction decode stage or the ID stage. In this case, we are reading certain registers uh, from the register file. And at the end, we may also be interested in writing to the register file, depending on what type of instruction we are executing. The next stage was the execute stage or the address calculation. Um, now, if we, we, if we are doing R type instructions in which we are just adding or subtracting or multiplying and so on, we are executing an instruction. Or if we are loading or storing or branching for all those other types, we are doing a address calculation, a branch address uh, calculation or the target address calculation for load word and store word instructions. So all of those things are happening in the EX step stage. The next stage was the memory access, which was mainly for the uh, load word or store word instructions, whether we are trying to read from the data memory or write to the data memory. And then the last one was the WB, the write back stage, which is essentially used to write one of these things, either from the me data memory or directly the output of the ALU back into the register file. So those were your five stages and we uh, started putting pipeline registers in the middle of each of these uh, steps. So there was a IF ID pipeline register and so on. We had four of them that was helping us do the pipelining. So the pipeline architecture looks like this, where you have taken the uh, pipe, non-pipelined or the generic hardware and included four pipeline registers. One over here for IFID, one over here for IDEX, one over here for execute and memory, and one here between memory and write back stage. And those um, pipeline registers were not only getting things from uh, hardware before, they were also responsible in saving temporarily the control signals as long as the instruction is in the pipeline. And as soon as you use that control signal, you no longer need it, right? So for example, if I zoom in over here and take a look at the control signals for the write back stage, control signals for the instruction for the memory and control signals for the execute stage for that particular instruction. As soon as we use the execute uh, uh, related, execute step related control signals, we no longer needed to save that for the next pipeline register. So that's what we had discussed um, uh, in the in the previous class in the pipeline architecture. Now let's focus on one specific type of hazard, which was the data hazard. This was the first one we talked about in the previous class, where 
you are trying to write something to a register and immediately using that register as an operand in the next instruction. So there is a price to pay over here, which is I may not have written to S0 before I actually use it in the next instruction. And you can see that by looking at the timing waveform here. I'm actually writing to S0 all the way over here. That's when I'm writing to S0, whatever the addition is of, you know, the contents of T0 and T1 get added and then you write it to the destination register, in this case S0. So I'm doing that way over here. But if I use a pipeline structure in which my next instruction subtract has already come into the pipeline two, second, two nanoseconds later, and it has started going through that pipeline, I actually need the new value of S0 over here, way before I've already written it, right? So I've not even written it and I need it. So that's a contention. So if I just blindly go about executing these instructions, then my subtract instruction, and if I were, if I were to use a pipeline architecture, then my dollar S0, the, the contents of the, uh, register will actually be the old contents, not the result of this addition instruction. That was data hazard. The register hasn't been updated yet. Is this going to be a, a, a critical error? No, it's just going to take whatever the, the value of earlier, earlier as zero was, and it's going to uh, continue the subtraction. It's not even going to, uh, you know, the program is not going to stop. The program is not, not going to stop but we will get incorrect results because we wanted this subtract instruction uh, to use the new value. So that's a problem. That's what we call data hazard. So how do you fix it? Let's try to see how this pipeline diagram uh, can help us answer a few important questions. So in the top of the slide over here, we have this pipeline diagram and we are showing one clock cycle, second clock cycle, third clock cycle, fourth clock cycle, fifth clock cycle, and the last clock cycle, clock cycle number six over here. That's time in cycles. Right now, what we are assuming is we are going through clocks. Each clock cycle is being used for one particular step. There are two instructions that we are trying to execute. There's a load word instruction, and then the next one immediately after that is a subtract instruction. So that's your pro program execution order. Now, as I mentioned in the previous class, uh, different things are being shaded depending on whether you're trying to write to them or read from them. So for example, the instruction memory, you only read from the instruction memory, which is why the right half is shaded. Uh, you only read from the register file in clock cycle two for the load word instruction. Uh, that's why only the right half is uh, shaded. But if you go all the way down to the clock cycle number five, that's when you're trying to write to the register file. So in this case, the left half is highlighted. If, if a component is highlighted all throughout, like the ALU, that means that everything in that component is being utilized the pipeline registers are also highlighted because they are being written to and read from all the time. Now, there is, there is uh, the first thing that you notice is load word instruction uses clock cycles one through five and subtract instruction uses clock cycles two to clock cycle six. Now, I also want to point out what if you don't highlight anything? For example, the data memory over here, there's no highlighting over there. That essentially means that during this subtract instruction, you are not reading or writing to the memory, data memory, right? So you're essentially bypassing that data memory uh, and then eventually writing to the register. Uh, that's the destination register, $11. That's the number, right? Uh, so no highlighting means no action. Highlighting on the right means reading. Highlighting on the left means writing. Now let's try to answer. So that's how you read that pipeline diagram. Next, let us try to answer these questions. 
the first question is how many cycles does it take to execute the code well the, your code has two instructions so how many clock cycles is it going to take for you to execute these two instructions what do you guys think six right so that's pretty straightforward if i look at clock cycle over here i have got a one here and then i've got a six here so from start to finish of both these instructions i will need six clock cycles i could have answered that by looking at this pipeline diagram all right let's try to get some more answers the next question is what is each instruction doing during each clock cycle for example what is subtract doing in clock cycle number three can you answer that what is the subtract instruction doing in clock cycle number three reading from the register file absolutely so it is reading from the register file for operands right so this subtract operation is actually reading the contents of dollar two the contents of dollar three so that later on in clock cycle four it can actually do the uh, subtraction so it's reading from that register file specifically contents of dollar two and or register number two and register number three right. reading from the register file yes and we could have extended this question for any of these instructions for any of these clock cycles and we get that information by looking at a pipeline diagram next do we have a hazard can we answer that using a pipeline diagram more specifically can we answer that by looking at the instructions themselves if i look at the instruction can i can i uh, figure that out is there a uh, no so there is no hazard right so there, there's no hazard that, and you're absolutely right uh, because over here what you're doing is uh, you are loading something from the memory to a register this is your base address you are adding the adding the offset 20 to it to get the target address in memory and whatever you have at that target address you are writing to register number 10 so you're changing the contents of register number 10 here. However, register number 10 is not being used here, right? So there is no data hazard present. So sure, if I look at the instructions themselves, I can clearly find out that there is no data hazard present over here. However, could you, could you, uh, could you find that out by looking at the pipeline diagram? Would you know would you know by looking at the pipeline diagram whether you have a data hazard or not no I, I i don't right so one thing that may indicate that a, a data hazard is possible is the fact that i'm writing to a register in clock cycle five right so if there was no writing back then I would be safe. I would never be uh, worrying about data hazard. But in this case, because of load word changing the contents of a register, I need to write to the register file at the very end. So I know that there is a possibility for a data hazard, but I don't know what the operands are over here, right? I don't know what the operands are for the next subtract instruction. If they were the same register, then I would be in trouble. But there's no direct way to know using the pipeline diagram just the just the the clock cycles uh, whether the hazard is there or not but if you were to look at the instructions then you can clearly say no there is no hazard so no over here questions about the the pipeline diagram how should we describe how should we describe instruction 2 at cc5 instruction 2 at cc5 by uh, bypassing the data memory that's how i would describe it no problem all right uh, let's move on now let's take an example here uh, and clearly we are talking about fixing data hazards uh, so you would expect an example in which you have a data hazard so the example is starts off with some initial values in three registers. Register number one has a value of zero. 
register number 2 has a value of 10, register number 3 has a value of 20. The next few are instructions, MIPS instructions. There is a subtract, and, or, add, store word. Those are all instructions um, in which register number 2 is being used either as an operand or as a destination. And so in the first statement over here, the subtract, you took the contents of register 1, you added the contents of register 3 to it, and then you put the result in register number 2. So the, using the initial values, the contents of the new value, the new value in uh, register 2 would be 1 plus, uh, sorry, 1 minus 3, right, subtract. So 1 minus 3, 0 minus 20. So the new value is negative 20 in dollar 2. But if you notice, the that same register to which we are writing, we are using that as an operand here, we are using that as an operand here, we are using that as an operand twice here, we are using that as an operand in, even in the last one. So for some of these, it might not be a problem. For some of them, especially the ones that are immediately after the, uh, the first subtract instruction, you are going to have a data hazard. So my goal will be to talk about two things. One, I want to talk about the value of $2 in at each of these steps there is a possibility that there might be some confusion because of the data hazard being present right so that's one thing I want to fill out on this uh, table here uh, on this uh, slide here but what I'm going to use as a reference is a complete pipeline diagram for all these five instructions that were listed on the previous slide. So actually I can uh, monitor the value of uh, register two per clock cycle right here. So I'm, I'll just fill out these blanks. Blank here, blank here. I don't know what these are. They may be updated, they may not be updated, but that's what I want to find out, right? Um, note the initial value of uh, the second register is 10. So let's go through this. Clock cycle number one, what would be the value of register number two? So what should I enter over here? 10, right? So there's no confusion over there. I have not written to dollar two yet. Where do I do it? Right here. Right, I do that in clock cycle five. So, uh, in clock cycle number one, my register uh, should have uh, the same value as before. Ten, perfect. How about clock cycle number two? So, clock cycle number two, uh, we are reading the register file as far as subtract instruction is concerned. We are actually decoding the instruction. Sorry, uh, the reading the instruction memory as far as the AND instruction is concerned. So when we are in clock cycle two, what would be the value of dollar uh, two, which is being used as an operand, by the way, ten still, right? Because I have not changed it yet. I change it over here in clock cycle five. So right away you see that there is a data hazard at play. I did not write two dollar two yet. I have used it right away. So I got an incorrect or the old value, right, is a problem. The uh, Just so that you guys see what that red uh, marking is, all these red things on the instructions uh, are where that $2 register is being used, either as a destination or as an operand. And then in the pipeline diagram, it's being shaded over here, dollar two is written. Over here, dollar two is red. Over here, dollar two is red. Over here, dollar two is red. 
over here dollar two is red so all of those are being highlighted uh, as a shaded one everything else is not being shaded all right so let's move to clock cycle three what about clock cycle three what is the value of register dollar two in clock cycle three still 10 i have not written anything to it i read from it maybe i read from it over here uh for for the second register i read for from it uh, so it looks like i actually read uh, 10 so now i can go back and say when i was reading this this was actually 10 right for the and instruction this was actually 10 all right let's go back to next cc4 clock cycle number four what would be it uh, i'm actually reading re the register file for dollar two here uh, still haven't changed right so i hope you guys agree that this is also 10 still haven't changed it right uh, which means that for the or operation the operand coming from dollar two was the old one still 10 next clock cycle five so in clock cycle five you are writing to uh, dollar two and you're also reading from dollar two so now the question is what value of dollar two is it going to be is it going to be uh, 10 as the previous one or is it going to be something else negative 20 all right so negative 20 is the value that we got out of the subtract operation so uh, you guys are saying that it is going to be negative 20 but for that to happen you see for that to happen this reading has to be exactly after we write does the add read negative 20 also uh, yes or maybe no that's a confusion so for clock cycle 5 because the edges are so tight right this is happening right after that I you really don't know for clock cycle 5 whether the old 10 was being used or the new negative 20 is being used so I'm going to write both of them over there there is a possibility that it could be 10 there is a possibility that it could be negative 20 so both need to be mentioned over here and that really depends on how much time is uh, between this write operation and this read operation because you see in every digital circuit there will be setup time and hold time there will be minimum time requirements between the, when you change things and when you read from that change if they happen very very close to each other then they are not it's not if you you have to write then hold that value which is called the hold time and then you can read it for sure so how would we know that what's dollar 14 for sure yeah absolutely right we don't right so it could be using 10 it could be using negative 20 i don't know which is why i wrote both of them over here next uh, in clocks so when I do this right when when I do the add operation I really don't know what this is so I'm gonna write 10 or negative 20 there are some chances that it would be negative 20 but it's not guaranteed next how about clock cycle 6 what would be the value here all right so now we should be okay right so we should be okay now and we should say yeah, negative 20 here and i suppose you guys will agree negative 20 here negative 20 here negative 20 here right now we are absolutely certain that the writing has happened it's stable and we are okay uh so let's see let me just complete this negative 20 so we are okay right now let me come back to this and um think a little bit wishfully right 
when you look at this, what would you wish that happened so that uh, you didn't have this problem? I am writing to the register over here. So, but what, what is the value that I'm writing? I'm writing negative 20 to dollar two over here. But where is that negative 20 being computed? Clock cycle three, absolutely right. So that negative 20 was being computed over here, right? So wishful thinking, if there was a way for me to use this value and you see dollar two, when you read it for the AND instruction, this guy is RS and this guy is RT, right? Uh, let's see. This guy is uh, maybe dollar two and this guy is dollar five. I actually computed negative 20 was computed here. So if I did this, if I actually uh, forwarded this value here, I would have been okay, right? Because what I really want is for this particular AND instruction, which is happening over here, to use the new value as opposed to the old value, right? So if I you if I use this over here instead of this over here, I would have been fine. You guys see that? And where am I? Where am I storing the result of this ALU? I'm actually storing that result in this particular pipeline buffer, right? So each of these is a pipeline buffer. So for example, uh, what is this guy? This is IF ID. This is ID EX. This is EX mem. This is mem right back. So if I was able to forward the contents of the ALU result from the execute memory pipeline register to one of the operands of the ALU, which is in the next, uh, which is next in the pipeline, I would have been fine. I absolutely would have been okay. Now let's take a look at another problem here. So that was that that would have fixed this AND instruction. It would have been okay. However, there is one more criteria, uh, one more uh, problem. Look at this OR operation. This R operation is also using the old value, negative 10, right? So if there was a way for me over here, what am I doing? Uh, I'm doing from here, if I was able to forward to here. Uh, maybe I can use red one, thick, right? Right? That's where dollar two is, right? There is RS, there is RT. This is RT. So to to avoid the uh, data hazard for the R, I could have forwarded that same value of negative twenty for this uh, to this particular uh, point, so that R would have used the new value. Now, when you come down to add uh, the, the you when you come down to add instruction, if you no forwarding is sort of necessary because you can assume the ideal situation where you have written and you have read. So when you actually are using it over here for for the add operation, let us assume that it is actually using the updated value. So there, it was a problem for the first two instructions after the write operation happened, 
but after that it would it was okay you guys see that so that's what we are calling forwarding questions about this We will be looking at a lot of examples about this. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more in detail about this uh, idea. Uh, so do we check the buffer for $2 first? No, no, no. So uh, very good question, Roland. So what we really have to check for is, is the destination register in subtract operation the same as the source registers in the next one? That's what we will check. Is the destination register here the same as one of the source registers or not? If not, no data hazard. If yes, there is a data hazard. Uh, next two, actually, yes. We'll also check whether this guy is the same as the RS or RT for the OR register as well. How is this achieved on hardware level? Oh, there is a forwarding unit that we need to include. Does ALU uh, save result back to IDEX? So ALU uh, result will go through the forwarding unit and come back to uh, wherever we need it next. So there's a lot more hardware required to implement it. That's where we are going. All right. So there is there is also um, th there is also another way of uh, doing it, which is stalling. Stalling tends to be, you know, a lazy solution, uh, but it is a solution. Uh, so let's talk about stalling first. It's a it's a simpler option, and then we'll, we'll get into more details about uh, forwarding that we just discussed. So the lazy solution is to put delays, right? So if I included no operation. NOPS, no operation. Or NOPS. I have the subtract operation in which I'm changing this content, I'm writing to it. No operation here, bunch of no operations here, and then I can start using it as an operand. I may be I may be fine. So the next question is how many no operations should I insert over here? for that data hazard to be fixed. Two, absolutely right. So they are, they, you need two of them here. You see this? The error was for add and R. So if you replace this with no op, no op here, and then started and or add software load, you just push everything down by two, you would have been fine. So. In other words, you are essentially saying, push this out so that it gets aligned with in clock cycle five with uh, the writing of the register, right? So you are essentially pushing this out. We need to push it once here and twice here. So two knobs required to do that. Absolutely right. And this is a lazy solution and there is a uh, price to pay, right? Like now, uh, time taken to execute all the instructions is going to be more. Uh, we have added two more instructions in the middle to do nothing. Uh, let's see, is it because dollar two doesn't update until clock cycle five? Yes, so dollar two doesn't, that's exactly right, Rogan. Uh, in this case, isn't it still hazardous when instruction two reading from register five? So we are assuming that that kind of, uh, um, that kind of, a uh, whole time limitation, uh, we are assuming that we don't have to worry about that. In other words, we are assuming that we are able to write to it and then read from it instantly without any issues. Wouldn't you push it three times? I thought we would have to wait to update the register. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, I'm assuming that negative 20 is what we is being used here. If that is the case, I only need to push it twice down. All right, let's move on here and move on there. So that uh, lazy solution of inserting knobs 
is you know okay it's uh, pretty easy to do that um uh, everywhere uh, how do you identify where to do it right so the, the simplest way to identify it is is it is this guy being used is the destination register being used in the next two re instructions if it is not then no need for not if it is then you need to push it down by two all right there's another uh, way to do this which is what we were calling the uh, register forwarding approach in which as soon as the new value is updated we can actually push it out right we can actually use that uh, for the next one so as soon as I compute I can push it out so uh, I've computed it over here you see I'm just going to do this here so for the subtract operation I've computed it here I can push that onto here. You can see that uh, where this is, uh, what is this? EX mem. EX mem. Uh, this is mem right back. Now, from this to this, we'll make sure that there is no data hazard as far as the AND instruction is concerned. But for OR, where I really need it is over here, right? So I don't need to actually, and where does this read from? It actually reads from this guy, right? So this forwarding needs to happen from the mem right back stage uh, interstage buffer so for the next one we would forward from here to there Aye. what so the the um, Subtract instruction goes through. The result is available here, here, until it is written. So instead of forwarding from here to here, I can simply forward from here to here. Right. So that's your better way of register forwarding. I don't need to do that beyond it, right? Beyond that, I already, I already have the new value. So the register forwarding approach highlighted over here use the updated value from the execute mem pipeline register for the next instruction ALU input as opposed to waiting for that to be read from the register file you are just updating it this way and you only need to do that if a particular criteria is met which is destination in this guy is the same as the operand in the next one only then you can do you need to do that otherwise you don't need to do that similarly there is also so that is called xmem forwarding right so that this is that is called to wait xmem forwarding because we are forwarding the contents of xmem pipeline register to the alu for the next instruction but if you look at the or instruction we are actually doing uh, a different type of forwarding there which is the mem write back forwarding we are looking at the contents of mem write back register as the subtract instruction is getting executed we are forwarding that value of the destination register to the ALUB side because over here dollar two is the uh, RT, the second register. So that is called mem write back uh, forwarding. You only need to do the, these two, right? So there is X mem forwarding and there is mem write back forwarding. That's all you will need. One of these to be forwarded. Or in this case, both of them are being forwarded. 
beyond that, you don't need any other forwarding because by the time you get to the add instruction, you are assuming that negative 20 is the value that you have. No need for further uh, update. Uh, what will happen? What happens to the XMEM that is reading the incorrect? Uh, you mean this guy? Yes, okay, so you are on the right track, Jeff. We need a selection, right? So we need a selection between actually three values. One is going straight through. The second is forwarded from the XMEM stage. The third, yes, absolutely, another mux. <laughs> yes. So we need another mux here to select between the current register file forwarded from the xmem stage <laughs> forwarded from the mem write back stage so absolutely yes you need muxes to do this selection and that selection again depends on whether we have that hazard pre uh, data hazard present or not all right uh, we'll talk about all those conditions uh, today all right so now like i said we need uh, to check whether the destination register for the previous instruction is also the source for the current instruction. And the way you check that is by implementing Boolean logic. This is going to be a, uh, a combinational circuit in which you are monitoring the contents of uh, the, the numbers of RD and RS and or RT registers and checking whether they are the same or not if they are not same then you don't even have to worry about data hazard we only worry about them for the next two instructions if they are the same so if there is a hazard that exists then we are going to pass the needed values via the forwarding paths we need to still uh, implement this with pipeline registers and like we talked about muxes and sometimes you will do xmem forwarding and sometimes you will do mem write back forwarding uh, so let and sometimes you need to do both so for example over here we had and and or both of them needed dollar two so we had to do forwarding on uh, for xmem as well as mem write back okay let's move on here uh, to detect so we need to build a uh, combinational circuit that detects this hazard present or not. So how do I do it? Let's see. Let's see this play out for the uh, for two cases. One is with respect to the immediate next instruction, and the next uh, uh, case two will be for the R instruction, the the instruction following that. Right. So this case one. Uh, is specifically for the next instruction. How do you detect it? Well, it is simple, right? If the destination register, destination register, which is in the XMEM pipeline register, if that is the same as the source register, which is right now in the IDEX, which is this guy, right? Uh, sorry, not this guy. IDEX is there. XMEM is there. You're trying to look at, again, there, there are two conditions, right? A and B. 1A is checking whether destination register is the same as RS for the next one. 1B is checking whether destination register is the same as RT for the next one. Let's also ask this question here. When you say XMEM and XMEM, these are right here, right? So the interface between execute and memory. For the subtract instruction, you're taking that particular value. What is that? The field is register RD in the XMEM register. When subtract instruction is going through, that would be $2, right? That as the subtract instruction is going on, 
that would be dollar two. And as the uh, as that subtract instruction is right now in say between clock cycle three and clock cycle four at the same time and instruction is also between clock cycle three and clock cycle four where the thing to check this against is the IDEX. So the source and the, or, uh, the, the, the one of the sources from the IDEX that is for the next instruction, the AND instruction is also dollar two right here. As you can see, it is RS, right? You're checking whether they're same or not. And if they are, you have detected data hazard. This not only applies for RS, this also applies for RT the same way because this dollar five could have been over here. Dollar uh, two could have been over here. It could have been the second operand. You still need to check for that. So case one, you're trying to detect whether there is a hazard present between the uh, uh, main instruction in which you are writing the changing contents of a register and immediately using it, right? So the case one has to deal with those two. Questions about how to detect um, data hazard? Of course, if I want to check these values, then as I do the pipelining, as I uh, figure out what, what all to write to uh, each of these pipeline registers, I also need to write these to the pipelining registers, right? What is RT, what is RS, what is, what is RT for the instructions? I need to write them as well as the instruction progresses. Okay, next, case two. Now we are moving on to the hazard between the subtract instruction and the OR instruction. In that case, nothing really changes except now, that's it. The only thing that changed for case two is, the case two is looking at the data hazard as far as the OR instruction is concerned. The only thing that changes is in case one, we were looking at the subtract instruction and the source was the XMEM, right? It was this guy. For the next one, for the R, it would be this guy compared to whatever the source is over here, right? That's the only change. So XMEM, these two things uh, have been changed to MEM right back. That's it. That's the only change. Everything else is the same. You are still looking for destination register if it is the same as the one of the two sources. So that would be case two. As far as detecting a data hazard is concerned, two instructions down from the uh, instruction that in which we are actually writing to a register. Questions about this? Again, um, uh, let me see. The way things are shown, is 2A true or 2B true? Which one is true? The way things are shown. To b yes. You see this? It is dollar two is RT right now. Dollar two here was RD, right? So RD in the mem write back is the same as RT in the IDEX. So we are actually satisfying to be. But either of them would have resulted in a mem hazard. So this is called a mem hazard. The previous one is called the execute hazard. So this is the presence of this is called EX hazard, ex execute hazard. And the other next one is called the mem hazard. 
they are both categories of uh, data hazard. All right, questions about this? Okay. So let's put um, all of them together. 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. So the first two are checking for whether the destination register in the XMEM pipeline register, is it the same as one of the source registers in the previous pipeline register, which is the IDEX pipeline register. So those two, the first two are actually checking for the first one and the second instruction, right? First and the second. So you can say these two are actually checking for check data hazard for between uh, for next instruction. And these two are actually checking data hazard for instruction following that, right? For instruction after next instruction. So think about like one, two, three, right? So this is where things are being written, right? And you are reading them here and here, using them as an operand here and here. So if there is a hazard between the first and the second one, that would be the X hazard, execute hazard. And if there, if there, the hazard is between one and three, that would be the mem hazard. Uh, let's see, why are they different? Is it because one A and B, uh, why are they different? Uh, is it because one A or B is dollar two not yet computed and two A is dollar two not yet saved? Uh, no, so in all of them, the hazard is there because the register to which you are writing doesn't have the correct value yet and you are using them using it before that right and you could do that in the next instruction or you could do that in the instruction that follows that if you do that in the next instruction we are we, we are going to use these two criteria to detect for that and then if you are uh, checking for the data hazard between subtract and or instruction, then we can check for 2a and 2b. No problem. So we can we can actually highlight these guys, right? This is uh, all of this is your destination registers, right? Is the destination register in your primary uh, instruction? Is it the same as one of your source registers. So this is one of your source registers. Uh, question in the chat box and 2A and 2B would forward from mem right back. Yes, that's right. They would do it like this. Mem right back forward it to the next ALU. Yep. But you know, clearly you guys have identified that we need a mux. You guys have seen that. We need a mux to, um, one of the inputs is straight through, normal, right? No hazard. The other is feedback from the um, execute 
memory uh, pipeline register and the next one is mem write back register so there, there will be three inputs to a mux and you have to select one of them depending on which of which of these guys has become true if one a and one b are true then you allow for the x mem forwarding if 2a and 2b are true this or this is true then you allow for uh, mem write back forwarding so that's called the ex hazard this is called the mem hazard and the way you fix that ex hazard is by forwarding the xmem register uh, contents to the next one uh, to the next a the alu uh, or the uh, a mem take a look uh, about that also to uh, you know something to note there are literally three things that we are monitoring right first second and third instruction so if you look at uh, the pipeline registers these are all IDEX, right? So no matter which one you're talking about, either the second one or the third one, it is the instruction currently in the IDEX stage. So that is referring to uh, this guy right here. That would be the IDEX for the uh, AND and this guy right here. But as far as the first instruction is concerned, it's not IDEX. It is actually either mem write back or execute mem. Right? That's why you are getting two different ones over here. okay let's move on okay so here we have a forwarding unit where we have we put it right here so this forwarding unit has to do this uh, check right so it has to do 1a 1b 2a 2b check for that it needs uh, xmem rd xmem rd xmem mem write back rd all, all of these right to do that check let us see whether we are getting those or not so let us first focus on uh, the uh, RS, RT, RD, all of those, right? So the forwarding unit in black has uh, several inputs. So for example, this one is the register destination register in the EX mem stage. You see that this is EX mem pipeline register. In that there is a field for which is your destination register that is being considered as an input to that forwarding unit because that's where you are checking there is also another check that comes from the mem write back pipeline register for the RS uh, for the register RD right so let me uh, maybe we can uh, sort of color code it no, I need to do this. Maybe I can do it in green. So if you look at RD, right, all of these say are RD, right? Those are coming into that forwarding unit from here and here. One is coming from the XMEM pipeline register. And the other is coming from the right uh, memory write back pipeline register. I need to check those values against the RS or RT registers in the IDEX pipeline register. Let's take a look. This is your IDEX pipeline register. Those are your RS and RT registers because RT could be an operand or it could be a so uh, it could be an operand or it could be so depending on which type of instruction it is uh, they could be one or the other right so you are, you are taking these that's your rs 
and that's your RT. But they also need to be saved to this uh, IDEX pipeline register, right? How do you save them? Well, consider the instruction itself. From that instruction, tap out the from the IFID pipeline register, tap out RS, RT, RT, RD, all of that, put them onto the uh, IDEX pipeline register. You will need to check for RS and RT. So you've got black arrows coming into the forwarding unit. You're checking for whether these guys are equal to those guys or not. And depending on whether they are or not, you would send outputs to certain muxes, right? So you would send an output to this particular mux and we can call that forward A control line and to this mux and we can call that forward B. Forward A essentially selects one out of three for the ALU A operand. Forward B selects one out of three for the ALU B operand, uh, operand. Now, why do we need three of them? One of them is straightforward, right? So one of them is uh, no data hazard go through. No data hazard go through. That's fine. That's one. The next two correspond to an execute hazard has occurred or a mem hazard has occurred. Depending on whichever one, you either feed back, you see this, this guy is coming from where? This guy is coming from, oh, all the way over here, which means it is coming from the mem right back stage. Or this guy is coming from where? This guy is coming from right here. The, um, after the execute, right? So that's the execute uh, memory register uh, uh, pipeline register so you can either do the xmem forwarding or the mem write back forwarding but that depends on so that that's how you would select one out of the three no hazard x hazard oh, sorry i don't think this is this is no hazard right so i can write that uh no hazard right here um maybe too too dark so no hazard go straight through same thing applies here no hazard go straight through one is going to the alu a side the other is going to the alu b side why do we need a selection there because your uh, source and destination registers rs and rt could have been here or could have been here right one of them now, the next one is, uh, let's also talk about which one this is. This one, actually that one was easier, right? So this one was right here from the X-Men. So red, sure, I can say this guy was X-Men forwarding. And similarly over here, this was uh, Mem right back forwarding. Are forward A and forward B two bit controls? Absolutely right. To select between three things, I need two bits. Yes. Uh, what happens if both my operands were the incorrect dollar two? Uh, what both my operands were incorrect dollar two? Right. So in that case, you would forward. Uh, well, let's see to both of them, right? So to both of them, you would forward the, the same value. Let's take a look at that. that I think that's a, that's a special case uh, that we can take a look at. L let me try to get through this. Uh, th th uh, this is a lot of information that I want to parse out uh, before we get into those special cases. All right, so 
that's no hazard this is memory write back this is execute memory forwarding all right the same thing applies for the next one right so there's no hazard there there is x uh, mem write back forwarding there and then there is uh, x mem forwarding over here depending on what you select for forward b uh, all right so that's your forwarding unit doing all of these selections but for that we need to add muxes right and also new inputs to the muxes let's learn about the the new muxes there were two of them one to which your select was forward a the other was with forward b as the control lines so when forward a is zero zero then it is like no hazard was det detected proceed as normal which essentially means highlighted in pink say uh go th oh, too big go through this way right what is the source of that operand it is coming from the idex pipeline register idex pipeline register is the source what is the explanation of that uh, selection zero zero the first alu operand comes from the register file directly from the register file so that is you can maybe say this is for zero zero right so this is zero zero no hazard goes through uh, next one when forward a the control lines are one zero one zero means you have detected case number one which is the x hazard the execute hazard so ex case one hazard is detected you need to do forwarding what kind of forwarding execute slash mem forwarding so now the first alu operand is forwarded from the prior alu result right just one prior so whatever the alu result was from the prior one it was stored in the execute memory pipeline register take that and then forward it so that would be uh, i think the number was one zero right one zero right so if i wrote zero zero over there this would be one zero and of course the, the other one was would be one zero one there's no one one because we don't need it we don't need the the last one so zero zero no hazard one zero x hazard zero one uh, memory hazard similarly you have the forward b no hazard execute memory so you have the same collect selections here zero zero one zero and zero one the source will change right idex execute mem mem write back idex execute mem mem write back uh, the the over here the first alu operand was changing over here the second alu operand will change either it will come from the register file which means no data hazard was detected or it will come from the prior result which means that there was hazard detected in case number one detection case number one or the uh, hazard was detected for case two so that's your mem hazard so it is coming from the data memory or an earlier alu result so that's like a two stages back for the source it is the mem write back pipeline register all right questions about this how, 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 how the the mux control uh, followed by the source of these muxes followed by the explanation you guys are okay with this the one thing to note is that we you know we, we could have had added one more uh, input to the marks uh, we we are not doing it just because we don't need it right now <laughs> all right now let's try to write this forwarding unit logic as some statements uh, that you could design your combinational logic based off of the first one is case number one which is the execute hazard what would be the logic for that 
we are just uh, trying to see if certain values are the same or not. Specifically, we are trying to monitor whether there is a check, whether there is uh, uh, an overlap between the destination register and one of the source registers or not. And depending on whether you have that hazard or not, you forward A and forward B. You select those control lines for the for the two muxes. So let's try to go through these statements. These are pretty easy to follow along, but you, let's try to This is case one, the execute hazard, which can be fixed by using execute xmem forwarding. So first state, uh, the, 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 the way it goes is if you are doing a write operation, right? Only when you're doing a write operation, only then you need to check for, for, for case one. If you're not doing any right sort of write operation to the register file, then you're really not changing the destination register anyway. Then in that case, you don't have to worry about a data hazard. So if the instruction that is currently in the execute memory pipeline register, if that particular register write control is true or not, by the way, where is this coming from? Into the control uh, forwarding unit, this particular input, right? If you go back and take a look, that actually is coming from right here. Let me track that in blue. That is actually coming from right here. Are you actually writing back or not, right? If you are not writing back, then you are uh, uh, really not changing the destination register contents anyway. All right. So if that is true and if the destination register is not equal to zero, what does that mean? You, you have to make sure that you are not writing to what, what is that dollar two dollar zero, right? cannot be written, right? It is fixed. It has all zeros. You cannot change it. So you have to be changing some, you have to be writing to the register file. That register should not be equal to zero. And there should be a match between the destination register in the XMEM uh, pipeline register and the source register or the destination register in the IDEX stage. If that is the case, then you make forward A10 and you make forward B10, which is right here. Take the value from the XMEM stage and forward it to the ALU for the second instruction which is what we are referring to as X mem forwarding to fix X hazard, execute hazard. Same, you know, this is just, everything is the same except this is RS, this is RT. So this is checking for, let me just write it down. This is checking for one uh, A and one B, right? One A and this is one B. Now, if all of this is the forward unit logic for case one, which is the execute hazard, you just have to repeat the same thing for the memory hazard with a few changes. Instead of um, execute mem, what, what, what all would change? All of this would change, right? One, one, two, three, uh, four, five, six all of that will change to uh, mem write back, right? All of that will change to mem write back. And all of these guys, forward A will be zero one, forward B would be zero one. That would be mem forwarding, a uh, mem write back forwarding to fix the mem hazard. All right, questions about the forwarding logic, uh, forwarding unit logic. Uh, check whether you are writing or not. Check whether your destination register is zero or not. 
and then check whether your destination register in the first one is the same as the one of the source registers in the second one that would be your x hazard or the third one that would be the mem hazard and you can fix that by appropriate x mem uh, forwarding or the mem write back forwarding and in this case we are using a mux to select which one to forward I can just do this. Uh, you guys get the idea. Everything over there should be replaced with this. And then this and this will be replaced with that and that. Okay. So this is your pipelined CPU with forwarding unit. Everything else is the same, except now we have added this forwarding unit and the two muxes. So this is everything all in one picture. Uh, nothing really new to, to say, but that, that's your... Um. Now let's talk about uh, the special case. I think uh, Jeff brought it up earlier. Uh, let's talk about that. We have an example. Here we are trying to execute three instructions um, now the question is is there a hazard present over here or you don't see a hazard present over here how about the first and the second one do you see a hazard there yes there is a hazard right we are trying to write to dollar one and we are using dollar one immediately there's a problem so there is a execute hazard present there. And in the second instruction, we are also changing the value of one it uh, for the second time, right? We are changing the value of one for the second time and we are using it in the subsequent one. So it's like if you look at one and two, there is an execute hazard. If you look at two and three, there is an execute hazard over there as well. And if you look at one and three, there is a memory hazard as well, right? So there is a memory hazard and there is an execute hazard. And that kind of is, is continuing, right? Because again, we are changing this. So I don't know if we'll use it again or not. So now the question is, what we, what should we do with the forwarding? Should we forward uh, XMEM? Should we forward MEM right back? What should we do in terms of the forwarding log unit logic? It turns out that we need to modify a little bit. So because you're writing to the first register you know in three consecutive register uh, three consecutive instructions and that dollar one register is also being used as an operand in the second and third register we can fix that by doing simply the x mem forwarding and no mem write back forwarding what that means is i'm just uh, if i go all the way back uh, Right. So I'm not going to do a mem write back forwarding. I'm always going to be forwarding with respect to the uh, execute mem pipeline register. So as soon as you get the next result, forward it. As soon as you get the next result, forward it. Right. So you, you are forwarding it in this way as opposed to this way. Right. So execute uh, uh, e execute memory forwarding will do the job compute the new result and then forward it immediately. So what we notice from here is that both types of hazard are affecting the same register. In this case, it is $1. We have a X hazard, we have a uh, memory hazard as well. So enabling the uh, memory forwarding uh, is, so if you want the most recent value, then you disable the memory write back forwarding 
you enable the execute memory forwarding. Immediately, as soon as the ALU computes the new value, forward that. So we are just going to re redefine uh, case two, right? So for the memory write back uh, forwarding logic, so it's like, it's this, right? So remember we said, this is the logic for case one. This will be the exact same thing for case two, except that all these guys in blue will be changed accordingly. So how would this change with based on uh, the fact that the same register has both both hazards? The way you check that is everything else is the same, except we add this condition in the middle. This is only a redefining a changing of the case two, not for case one. Case one remains as is. Case one, we anyways do XMEM forwarding. So we didn't need to do that. We don't need to check for that anyway. For case two, when we do the MEM write forwarding, we can have a special uh, check here, which is to make sure that we are not getting into a X hazard later on as well. So the, the you know, the, the way you're che checking is, uh, if you are writing to a register, and if that register is not equal to zero, then depending on whether the destination register is one of the source registers or not, forward zero one. That was memory forwarding, memory write back forwarding. Now you are making sure that it is not the same as the X hazard. So in other words, you are saying only forward, only do a mem write back forwarding when execute hazard is not true when execute hazard is not true but as you can see over here execute hazard was there and in the next one there was a mem write back memory hazard but there was also a, a execute hazard from the previous one right so when you have this both hazards happening then do not do the mem write back forwarding only do the execute ha uh, execute mem forwarding uh, so you you can we can capture that into the case two statements by adding these two lines and not this right so you're essentially saying the destination register here is not the same as one of the source registers here that's what you're checking over here. So if if you are, and not of all of this, right? If you're not doing uh, register write and it, the, we are not changing the contents of $0, and if the destination register is not equal to the source register. And similarly, you will have another set for RT as well. So that will uh, take care of uh this situation where we end up with multiple execute hazards one after the other all right this is all i have for you guys in terms of discussion um i know this was a pretty intense uh lecture with a lot of details uh so you know a, a really good way of uh, moving forward would be if you have uh kind of missed a few details or you know uh, 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 the recording will be available so review the recording um, to the parts where you have uh, you have not followed and feel free to ask questions now is the time for activity um, 